Welcome back to everyone's favorite game show, Metal Tropes. You know the drill. I give some examples of what I consider to be like the same sort of thing, and then you all give me a bunch more examples of the same thing in the comments, and then I put together a big list with credit to everyone who contributes. So let's play. One of the big projects I'm working on right now is expanding the ideas that I put together in my conference paper about car bomb, which was basically about the idea that rhythms, especially complex ones, often feel different to different people. In that paper, I talked about some of the most complicated versions of that. In this video, I want to single out a simpler set of versions, which I guess I'm gonna call hidden tactus rhythmic parallax. As usual, I'm using tactus to mean something like felt beat. Uh, which is you know, like the basic beat or pulse that you're moving to. The idea is that there are plenty of passages in metal and in lots of music where the drums aren't playing uh, and then when the drums come in, it makes us feel different than how it felt without them, even if what the guitar is doing doesn't actually change. In other words, in these sections, the tactus is hidden from the listener initially and what the band is playing without the drums might be misleading with respect to this tactus. And these sections can lead to some fun moments of disorientation when the tactus that the band is feeling is revealed, normally by some sort of timekeeping symbol. So normally quarter notes or, or whatever on the crash or hi-hat or, or ride. I'm gonna talk about two big loosely related categories of this in this video. The first is what Justin London calls metric fakeouts. These are these sections often at the beginning of songs where there's some sort of intro without drums and maybe it's easiest to feel it in one way for, for some reason. But when the drums do come in, it changes how you feel the whole thing. One of my favorite classic examples of this is in the Kinks, You Really Got Me, where the intro sounds like this. <laughs> And it's super easy to feel the beat like this with the guitar riff starting on beat one. And when the drums come in, it's not, it doesn't even necessarily shake me out of that hearing normally, but it's really when the vocals come in that I have to shift everything to hear that the guitar riff is actually starting on an upbeat, so on the end of four uh, instead of on beat one. Metric fakeouts are really fun, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them in this video because they're a pretty well-covered area of music theory. Justin London gave them a name a long time ago and collected a bunch of examples, and David Bennett and Yogev pretty recently made videos about this thing uh, with a bunch more examples, and Yogev's video even has a few metal examples in it. I'll put a little more of a music theory magnifying glass on these moments and give a few more that I like before I talk about the other big section that I want to get to in this video. So these moments are called metric fakeouts because the thing that's in question is meter. Meter is super complicated to actually try to define, but as a start we can say that meter has both cardinality and phase. Cardinality refers to how many units go by before things repeat. So 4-4 four, four has one cardinality, 7-4 has another. Phase refers to where the meter starts. You can have two different 4-4 four, four meters, but one has a downbeat where another one has an upbeat, as in the two versions of You Really Got Me. Normally what's unclear in metric fakeouts is phase, which is the same thing as downbeat location. In other words, we agree on how long each measure is, but we hear the downbeat in a different place than the band does. This is what's going on in pretty much all of the examples that Justin London has compiled and the ones in David Bennett's video, and all except one of the examples in Yogev's video. This is also what happens in the middle of Between the Buried and Me's Never Seen Future Shock, where there's a little break. <laughs> And I think it's really easy to hear the beat here. But when the band comes back in, they clarify that the beat is actually here. Less common metric fakeouts are ones where the cardinality is ambiguous. These almost always implicate hearing a different pulse than what the band is hearing, which is where I'm really going with this video. A classic example is Internaut's core relations, where when it's just the guitar at the beginning, it's easy to hear three guitar notes per beat because there's this looping three note arpeggio type thing. But 
when the drums and bass come in, it becomes clear that the band is hearing a beat every four guitar notes, and therefore hearing these guitar figures as dotted eighth notes phasing against this quarter note beat. Another example of this is in the middle of one of Meshuggah's most underrated tracks, the bizarre breakdown of Nebulous. Here, because the drums drop out, it becomes easy to think that they've done the unthinkable and actually gone through with a tempo modulation. And even when the drums initially come back in, the timekeeping symbol is super faint in the mix, and it's easy to keep hearing along with the guitars. But eventually, through a pretty complicated set of cues that I will someday do a full video about, they make it clear that the original Tactus never really left. In these cardinality fake-out examples, instead of it just being a question of where the downbeat is, there's a basic question of what tempo the tactus is even at, and the, the question of how to group that tactus comes along with that. So metric fake-outs are kind of one example where the tactus is hidden from the listener, so the band is uh, kind of playing a prank on you. They hear it one way, they play something, but they know it's ambiguous and you're probably going to hear it another way, then they reveal how they're hearing. And to recap, most commonly this have to do with where the downbeat is. You know, we hear the downbeat in one spot, but the band is actually hearing it another. And then there are also a few examples where the cardinality is, is kind of that question where we hear, you know, the, the dotted quarter note as the tactus, as the B, when really the band is hearing a regular quarter note or, or something like that. The other kind of section that I want to talk about in this video are what I'm going to call burst sections. These are sections which are pretty typical in metal and very fun, where all we get are an irregular series of full band attacks in rhythmic unison, normally in such a way where the tactus that's linking them all together is not super clear. Here's an example of this on the less confusing end of the spectrum from one of my favorite metal supergroups, John Frum. The tactus isn't that hard to hear, partly because the guitar riff repeats, but still it takes a little bit to get locked into what's going on before the timekeeping symbol comes in. Here's another really fun one from the first Flesh God Apocalypse album, where it's still not too hard to hear a tactus, uh, but it's a little trickier because the intro thing doesn't follow any sort of repetition scheme. Without timekeeping symbols, and especially without repetition, it can be hard to figure out what's going on. In this one, even though I can hear roughly what the beat is, it feels like it flips phase a couple times. Without other cues for meter, it's hard to get used to it and to predict it. And that's kind of the fun thing about these burst sections. They often stay unpredictable and disorienting. One of the big rites of passage for aspiring academic music theorists interested in musical time is reading Christopher Hastie's daunting book, Meter as Rhythm, which is very long, very dense, and very confusing. And it's hard to find if you don't have access to a university library. But the general gist of it is that meter, so you know, roughly that sense of one, two, three, four, etc., we get from music, is something we're constantly constructing from the sounds we hear, not something that exists like a priori in the musical ether or as a direct correlate of notated time signatures. So like if you hear two musical events, you'll start to expect a third after the interval defined by the distance between them. If you're wrong, you'll kind of constantly be recalibrating. And from these building blocks of expectation uh, and you know memory comes a sense of meter. 
the burst sections that I'm talking about really force you to do a lot of recalibrating. Even if you have a pretty good idea of what the hidden pulse is, there's normally a lot of contradictory information that you have to deal with to keep it going before the symbol comes in to help. So in other words, they kind of force you to make the tactus happen yourself in opposition to whatever contradictory, complicated stuff is happening in the guitars, as opposed to what normally happens where we can just kind of tune into the symbol and let the drummer do that work for us. In other words, in these sections, it feels like you're being bludgeoned by an agile ogre with a club because of the weight the full band puts behind each of these attacks. But it's like you're also blindfolded because you can't quite tell where the next blow will come from. I smiled, take my word for it, while I was writing this because of both how accurate a description that is of these sections and because of how most people would probably describe being bludgeoned by an ogre as a negative type of experience. But I guess us metal fans have a different sense of what counts as fun. Anyway, here are a few even more confusing examples. Sometimes these burst sections are really short, like in the intro to Car Bombs from the Dust of This Planet, a song I transcribed a few months ago and will post a full video about any week now. The song starts like this with a short, disorienting series of bursts. And, for that matter, so does the song that comes right after it on Meta, Secrets Within. The blotted science song Bleeding in the Brain has another pretty confusing version of this that I like. And the ocean's Jurassic has a cool extended version of this sort of thing that I still have trouble wrapping my ear around. And the very cool cult classic math rock album Brand Cuckoo by Pineal has a track with another disorienting version of this type of burst section. And also in kind of like math art rock area, there's an extremely confusing version of this in Extra Life's I Don't See It That Way, which will get its own video before too long as well. And finally, I did something like this on the second track of the EP I put out almost exactly a year ago with an obtuse series of nested tuplets and other trickery making the beat even harder to hear before the cymbals come in. I could expand this to include a ton of other sections where there's a big unpredictable string of rhythmic hits at the start of something, but I think for this I want to keep it contained to specifically examples where the tactus is also hidden uh, while there's this unpredictable string of rhythmic stuff happening. I think when the tactus is hidden, there's it's kind of a cool effect of musicians showing off how tight with each other they are that they can do a bunch of tricky rhythmic stuff together while keeping the tactus hidden from you, or they can do other sort of musical illusion where 
you feel the tactics differently than they do. So that should be enough examples to get started. Here's a conceptual diagram summarizing the different types of hidden tactics moments that I've talked about in this video. And as always, please make things easy for me to verify by giving band name, song title, and a timestamp, and any details about what kind of thing you're pointing out when you're putting more examples of this stuff in the comments. I'll have a link to a Google Doc with all of the metal examples in the pinned comment, including the ones from this video and Yogev's video, and any that come up in the comments. And I'm going to be smart and keep them sorted and alphabetized this time so it'll be easy to check if someone else has already put yours. Happy troping, my friends. See ya.